nice exciting morning today. Our new solar system for the camper trailer has just arrived from Off-Road Living. We have a couple of Full River 120 amp hour batteries and a solar blanket, all spark solar blanket plus a solar charge controller and I'm just about to open the packets up have a look at what we've got okay I'll start with the simplest item first and that's the solar charge controller Okay, this is an MPPT, which is a newer style controller. Uh, we haven't owned this style before, so it'll be interesting to learn a little bit about it. The best solar controller I have owned up until this point is a Plasmatronics PL20. They're rather expensive little beasts. These are not as expensive as the Plasmatronics, so it will be interesting to see. Okay, we have a certificate, a little manual, the one page user guide, I should call it. The controller itself, it's nice to see controllers coming already wired up with connections. In this case, we've got a couple of Anderson plugs. Solar in on this side, out to the battery. Nice metal case, some heat sinks on the back, good mounting holes. Once it's mounted, it obviously can be removed if you use the right kind of screws where the screw heads fit through the main hole and it'll just slot down into that. For, for people who are new to solar, and are not really aware of what you need in a system you must have a controller that takes care of flow coming into the batteries if you just put a solar panel onto these batteries what you'll happen eventually is you're going to get an overload of power and you will damage the battery so you must have one of these solar controllers are designed to do a couple of main tasks the first one is to stop too much power going into the batteries the second one is to stop too much power leaving the battery. It depends on how you wire the systems up, but ideally that's what a controller will do for you. The second item, and equally important, all components of a solar system are important, Ah, nice little sticker, we will definitely put that up. These are the guys we bought it from, Off-Road Living, a local WA company. Now if space is at a premium and you don't want to have big solar panels to lug around with you, big heavy solar panels, this is the new way to go. Okay, that's a very neat little package from Off-Road Living, local WA company. Very flat, that's three panels in there. That's smaller than probably a 40 watt panel and yet this is 130 watts of power. Good little handle for lugging it around. In the back we have a cable that of course has the Anderson plug which will plug directly into the solar charge controller. Lovely neat little unit. So if you're looking for solar gear, I would highly recommend you have a look at the gear that Off-Road Living have got. Good quality batteries, good quality panels, good quality solar charge controllers and you're supporting a local WA business. We will put a link to Off-Road Living in the comments below. 
have a look down there if you're just getting into solar power off-road living do start up packages something similar to this uh, we would highly recommend that you hop over to their website have a look and uh, have a chat to them about your requirements for your solar systems now the third component of any solar system are the batteries probably the most important thing to have good quality batteries if you don't have good quality batteries they're only going to last you a year or a couple of years at most we have seen gel cell batteries and AGM batteries that last something between 8 to 14 years so this can be a very good investment to buy a high quality battery we've seen very good reviews on the Full River series we haven't had this brand ourselves before they're AGM style battery glass mat batteries uh, they are effectively a sealed lead acid they can be mounted in any position they don't give off dangerous hydrogen gas like the old style lead acid batteries so let's have a quick look at what's in the box there won't be a lot to see here because a battery looks like a battery it's a one point this is 120 amp hours of power if you're discharging to 50 percent that means you've got half of that 120 amp hours as usable power this is the camper trailer that we're installing the solar system on 2008 model a Ranger trailer apparently they're built in Melbourne uh, it's got a solar system on it but the panels on that are pretty small and I had no way of telling really what condition the original battery was in so what I've done here is very simply that's just an installation of the new Fall River battery it was just a matter of swapping the batteries over as you can see there is an old solar controller in there you can probably see it just in the corner there uh, what I've done is added another set of cables so that we can put the new controller on it now I'll just go and get that and show you how everything links up very simple just plug in a couple of Anderson plugs set the panels up and it's done and here are the panels easy to set things up just flip that over cable in the pouch plus I've got the inverter down in here as well so all I have to do with this is hook it together it gives you the order of installation initially the load if you've got a load running off it I haven't at the moment and then the battery and then lastly the panel so we'll just hop around hook that up to the battery and as you can see once the battery's hooked in you get a green light come on now the battery's fully charged at the moment so we're not going to see any indication of charging but now I'll just go and set the panels up and we'll plug that in and that's the panel set up each panel has a small leg behind it so it'll stand up quite happily also has a handle so you can hang it off a tree or off the side of the vehicle it's got a 5 meter lead on it they may need to increase that at some stage but we'll see if that's sufficient and you can see I'm just putting some shade on that so it's a bit more obvious you can see the other green light flashing there that basically means everything's happy batteries are fully charged we're not using any power at the moment the other thing I did was put an analog voltmeter on the side of the box here so just at a glance I can see what the power is doing there is actually another meter for the power on the back of the vehicle in the kitchen area but in order to see that quickly I would need to pull the kitchen out each time I've got one more job left to do with this and this is to put a little arm in here so that I don't have to hold this up each time I 
want to get into the battery compartment now thankfully this is a no maintenance battery so it will just sit there charging and working and that's basically it there wasn't really much to putting the system onto the camper very straightforward now since we're out here we might as well just have a quick look around the camper this is what we're going to be going away on our next trip which will be probably in about a week or so's time has an outboard stand on it which is very useful when we want to take the dinghy away also has a dinghy rack part of it's not on at the moment it's just so we can open everything up solar panels on the front there's a fairly old water heater a truma storage water heater in there we haven't managed to get that working properly yet but uh, a bit more fiddling around hopefully we will flow jet pump inside there that's all working quite nicely uh, storage in the front is mostly for hoses guy lines and tent pegs and a few other bits and pieces bucket trailer has electronic brakes two four and a half kilo gas bottles which is handy it's always nice to have two bottles because you can tell when one's run out you know when to fill up one bottle is a bit of a nuisance an area a jerry can holder which is a bit of a silly design because it won't take a full-size jerry can the top of the camper here is a bit too low to take a full-size one but it does take a 10 litre now the boat rack ordinarily when your boat is on there you will swing that out let's see if we got the strength to do this swings up comes down and your boat will ideally be then on the ground and ready to pull out now the internal access there's a couple of clips that we haven't got on here at the moment nicely supported with some gas struts and you can see we're packing up getting ready for the coming trip the trailer has 120 litres of water in two 60 litre tanks plus we're going to carry another 50 litres in jerry cans so we'll carry as much water as we possibly can we estimate that'll give us about a week before we need to refill swing out kitchen on the back here all the cooking gear and associated items for cooking in those cupboards put a couple of handles on here they weren't here when I bought it uh, useful rather than just having the key and the plate cooker we do need to get a replacement knob for that one, we can still use it thankfully. Not in too bad nick, it was a bit on the grubby side when we got it, but it's cleaned up quite well. On the end of the kitchen we have the power system. We have a 12 volt plug, main switch, hot water, pump, tank levels, and we also have a voltmeter here but of course once this swings back into the trailer we're not going to be able to see that which is why I put one on the outside and we have another switch here for lights we have a wind down legs at the back to stabilize it once it's all up it'll be quite a different feel to going away in the coaster the coaster is very luxurious compared to something like this and that's the little dinghy that comes with the trailer fits on top It'll be interesting to see whether it will take our bigger dinghy. I doubt it will actually. This one's certainly a lot more difficult to lug around and has a much bigger motor. It's got a 15 horse. The little six that's on the back there now belongs to a small car topper. Uh, we'll do some more filming and show you the camper trailer in detail once we get out to our first campsite. Thanks to Off-Road Living for supplying our solar gear, our two Full River batteries, the AllSpark panels here, and the regulator. We'll be doing quite a bit of testing with the gear to see how it all functions and see how it lasts. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you come back later and have a look at the trailer once she's all set up on our first campsite. Cheers, see you later.